What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Killer Cam Frank coming back at you with another Mad 24 banger. And today we're gonna be going over the next part of our spread offensive ebook. If you guys didn't check out the last few videos, definitely go check those out first. We're gonna be going over a three one one set, three wide receivers, one tight end, one running back, uh, something that we can audible over to from monster and double stack so this is a very very good offense this is a very serious offense so if you're into less gimmicky stuff than we went over in the last video uh, you guys are going to enjoy this quite a bit let's waste no more time and hop right into it what's going on youtube again we are in the spread offensive playbook aka pass balance if you are in madden ultimate team and what we're going to be going over today is the formation trio offset i was going to make this a single part video between trio offset and trio offset week but i decided to put them in two separate videos because i didn't want this video to be an hour plus long uh, so without further ado let's hop right into trio offset and see how good it looks so starting off with audibles I like to set my audibles just like this. Level sale, RPO alert bubble, verticals, PA post shot. If you want to switch anything up, I would switch RPO alert bubble uh, with maybe one of the other RPOs or the other RPO in this formation, which would be the RPO alert wide receiver screen. It's really up to you personally. It depends on if you're playing more man or zone coverage. We'll get into exactly why here in just a second, uh, but those are the options that I would really recommend. So before we get into this, guys, there is a way to get wide receivers subbed in at tight end in these formations that we're going to be going over today and tomorrow. We're not going to do this, but I'm going to show you guys how real quick. It's going to be in a YouTube short later on today, but let's make this a quick little video, and I'll show you guys exactly what I mean. So going to the trio offset formation, which we're going to be going over today, also possible in the trio offset week, we see we have George Pickens here at wide receiver. How we're going to do that is just by cycling through the packages until we find four wide receivers. You guys see number 14 in at the tight end spot and we have a little extra speed on the field if you guys have really, really fast wide receivers. So quickly going over the buck sweep, this is a run that I prefer to run against man coverage. And the reason why is numbers. So obviously we have a numbers advantage to the right side of the field um, because we have two pulling guards. So what I like to do is try to follow my blockers, get to the second level. Obviously, there was a little bit of a shed right there, probably because my offensive line isn't the best. Um, but right here, if we can get to the second level and not get shed up the middle, we're going to be able to pick up big guards pretty much every single time. If you guys watched my last ebook uh, video series, we went over a RPO buck sweep out of my favorite formation to run, uh, which was another trip style off a trip style offense and with that rpo i averaged about seven yards a carry so as long as you can get to the edge on this buck sweep it is a very good run um, but it is something that i think is a lot better against man coverage instead of zone even if it doesn't look like it right here uh, we're going to have runs like this more often than not so there are actually quite a few runs in this formation. I'm not going to go over every single one of them. Um, the draw, I don't think draws are great this year. This isn't something that I would recommend um, using quite a bit. The power is very, very good. Um, I can show you guys that here too um, against like a cover three. The power is awesome. This is a great run play. Um, you're going to pick up yards consistently on this. Against a zone coverage look, what I like to do um, in a lot of these run plays is motion an extra blocker over. That way we have uh, better numbers to this side. Hopefully he can pick up a block downfield and we'll actually be able to get loose. Right there we pick up about five, six yards. You're going to pick up yards consistently. Any of these uh, runs with pulling guards, you're going to have a little bit more success and a little bit more opportunity to actually break them. Uh, so we do have this in the playbook. Right there we are actually able to get outside and we pick up a huge gain. Power is a very, very nice run. So let's talk about the outside zone. And I really like this run call against um, zone coverage looks. Now against man, you still can get some pretty good blocks. <clears throat> um, if you guys didn't know this, when you guys see um, blockers with the, the gray lines going up the field, that means when they pick up blocks, they're going to carry people up the field with them uh, in man coverage. So if you have like runoff elite, they'll run all the way up the field and uh, carry those blockers with them. But I like this just because of the numbers against zone coverage. Obviously, we have uh, three on two there on the outside. And then as long as our guard can pick up this guy right here um, against the four down lineman set, we should be pretty good. Right there, 
not the greatest run, but we still are able to pick up five, six yards. Outside zone runs are actually really, really good this year, especially against zone. Uh, we can see if we can try this again. And as we see right, right here, we're able to pick up quite a few yards. If I had a little bit better run stick, that could have been all the way to the crib. Uh, so I, I, I do like this outside zone quite a bit right here. Again, five, six yards, but you do got you guys do see the potential in it. Uh, we're going to go over one last regular run play and then the RPOs, and then we'll hop into some passing concepts. So I got to mention the read option right here. And what I do like about this read option is that um, obviously we have the read key, but there is a like kind of a fake bubble to the outside. And a lot of the time what will happen with that is um, the user will try to play that bubble, especially when we go over the next play, which is going to be the RPO bubble. And uh, they'll actually play that. And then that'll give us an opportunity to either keep it with our quarterback or uh, hand it off to our running back and hopefully get a big gain. The blocking also sets up a little bit better on these read options than regular inside zones, I think, um, just because you're taking one of the linemen off of the line if they are playing conservative run defense like they are right there. Obviously, you don't want to keep it with your quarterback in that situation. If you see that guy bite down on the run play, you can keep it with your, um, with your quarterback, but... We have Joe Montana. He's not super, super fast, so that's not something I'd recommend in this situation. Um, I do have Justin Fields, who's somebody that I could sub in if I wanted to, but this is a very, very good run uh, majority of the time right here. Like, right there, we should have kept it with our quarterback, and especially against man coverage, if you do get a situation where you can't keep it with your quarterback, uh, like this one, you're going to be able to bust a huge run to the outside. So, if they have their option defense on either aggressive or or they have it on balanced. Um, occasionally, you'll be able to bust one loose right there. It's really just all about reading that defensive end and making the right call. So right here, we have the RPO alert bubble. And uh, if you guys didn't know, bubbles are really, really good this year. Um, they're super, super consistent and being able to throw the bubble and pick up yardage right there, you got a little bit of a block shed, which isn't gonna happen super consistently. Um, but that bubble is awesome, guys. That bubble is so good, especially against zone coverage like we're seeing right here. A lot of the time in game, you're going to hold that block. They're not going to shed that block, and you're going to be able to take that for a massive gain. Uh, but we also have the run threat right here, and this is a really, really nice inside zone handoff. It's a quick handoff, and it's something that we can pick up yardage consistently on. <clears throat> That's why I like to have this in my audibles. Uh, so we have the pat the threat to um, to run and to pass the ball on this RPO. It's a really, really good RPO. And when we get into the next formation, I'm going to show you guys an even better one. Uh, but for this formation, I think this is the run to have in your audibles. And inversely, we have the RPO alert wide receiver screen. Um, I do like this. I do like it, but it takes a little bit longer for the block to set up. But if see, the, the thing about it is that by the time the block's set up, a lot of the time... Um, the ball's already going to be in the running back's hand. So we're going to throw this a little bit quicker right here. So we actually did get pretty good blocks right there, and we could have taken that maybe to the crib if we get a nice little juke move or something to the outside. But you have to throw this ball so fast with this. And um, the, the handoff honestly might be a little bit quicker than it is with the RPO bubble. Um, but the pass play I think is not quite as good now it definitely still does have some potential and it's one of those things where a lot of the time when people see that bubble a lot what they're going to start doing is manning up um this receiver right here this inside receiver with like either the slot corner or an inside linebacker and in that case <clears throat> we're going to be able to throw that bubble or that uh, rpo wide receiver screen all day and obviously they're going to have to pick or choose which one they want to man up because um both of them are going to be a threat and we still have big play potential on both. So I think this is also a very, very good run play. <clears throat> and it's something that's really good to mix up. Um, if you guys want to come out in this play, if you guys want to come out in the buck sweep and then audible to whichever either pass play or run play, that is also a good option. Remember, with all these formations, we're going to be audible and around quite a bit. Um, so you want your four money plays in your audibles, but we also want to have some nice run plays to complement our passing game. So I think these are the two. Um, to choose from between the bubble and this wide receiver screen. I just personally prefer the bubble because I think bubbles are a little bit better this year. So let's get into the pass plays, guys. Um, we're going to start out with level sales, and I'm going to show you guys some basic zone beating concepts out of this, and then we're going to get into some man beating stuff. With level sale, what I like to do is set up a simple flood concept. And if you guys don't have Hot Route Master, I recommend you have at least a um, slot apprentice and a running back apprentice, tight end apprentice also if you can afford it. 
but I think those are the two key abilities. And then we're just going to set up a uh, double flood combo right here. We're going to make sure we ID Miles Garrett. I'm going to make sure to take him out of the game because I'm going to get shedded crazy. But right here, you see we have a nice little dot on the sideline. We also could have thrown to the tight end right there. Corner routes with streaks behind them are going to be the routes to beat zone coverage. Um, if they're playing match, we're going to show you guys something here in just a second that's going to completely kill that. But this is the go-to um, for zone. If we wait a little bit longer, we did get hit, but you guys saw the Kyle Pitts was getting open on that. So this is my go-to. Um, we also have the opportunity to do this and switch up where the corner route is coming from on that left side, and that will give us um, a little bit better chance to you know, switch it up with our opponents. Uh, if they're manning up your inside guy, especially either for that RPO or that corner route, then we're going to be able to throw a corner route to uh, the middle slot receiver and Randy Moss right there, and we should be able to get a huge gain off it. Uh, he does get pressed, and we got slammed up the middle um, by, I'm not really sure who that was. That might have been John Randall um, or Aaron Donald, one of the two. Either way, got to step up in the pocket and that was a little bit too late of a read but you guys see that it is getting open on the sideline it's a simple flood concept it's something that's going to be good every single year i just want to reiterate it on these trip sets because these flood combos are so so good out of these trip sets i'm gonna go ahead and take miles gary out of the game before we get into our next passing plays all right so we're gonna go over the play flanker dig and um i'm gonna show you guys some similar concepts in some of these plays some of these plays are going to be a little bit different um but this flanker di dig play is a, it's pretty unique. I like this play uh, because of the wheel route from the slot. It's not something that you see a whole ton. So I'm going to show you guys against cover four this time just to switch it up a little bit. And I'm going to get into some man beating stuff here shortly. But against cover four, I really do like this. I got to make sure I take Miles Garrett out of the game because every single time I do a video, he just wreaks havoc on the video. Uh, so we got to make sure we do that right there. I can't forget because it's it's really rough if I don't. I'll put in like Nolan Smith or something. Pass rush in um, practice mode is absolutely insane. So we have a long developing wheel route, not one of the quick wheels um, from this play. And honestly, what you can do is you can just streak this outside guy. And if you can wait long enough on that sideline, you're going to be able to hit this in a tight little window. Back shoulder throw just like that. you got to throw it just a little bit behind him. Um, but that streak is going to clear out the sideline for that wheel, and you're going to have a lot of success with this combo. Now, if you do have a slot apprentice like I recommended, uh, you can also put this guy on a post route, and I think that is a really nice route combo. So you have the seam, you have the wheel route from the running back, and then you have the wheel streak combo on that sideline that we know is going to get open against zone coverage eventually. Uh, this tight end seam is also really, really good. I'm going to show you guys what this looks like against the cover two here in just a minute, but this play absolutely smokes cover two. And even against the cover four, there is going to be a window to throw that um even against the cover three honestly there's a window to throw that you're going to be able to throw that <coughs> tight end seam pretty much against anything and that's going to take away their user to the point where we're going to either be able to hit this post and behind it or we're going to be able to hit the sideline uh from that wheel street combo so i think this play is really really good post routes open right here obviously i not a great throw but you guys saw the post was getting open if you wanted to you can also streak this slot receiver right here and just go with a um, very very vertically attacking route combo but when you do that this seam's going to be open that wheel is going to pull that flat route to the outside enough to where you're actually going to be able to throw it and also we have the um, kind of in leading tight end seam that's going to pull any kind of hook zones towards the uh, tight end so that is also a really really nice play and if you guys want to um, you could also motion Kyle Pitts out right here and you will probably have a window to throw this running back late just like that as you guys can see even from the wide side we're able to complete that pass right there so that tight end seam is going to carry either an outside third or both the inside and outside quarters on that right side with it uh, so this is a really really nice play against zone coverage definitely something you guys should be utilizing so I actually have to edit this back in because I forgot to show you guys what this looks like against cover two, but um, this play is awesome against cover two. Flanker dig is really, really good against cover two. All you got to do is snap the ball, and eventually you will have the tight end up the seam just like that. Obviously, that was a um, deep route or deep out zone KO that knocked that out. If you're running this to the <clears throat> with your trips to the wide side of the field, 
Um, this is going to be completion pretty much every single time. With this inverted streak right there, there's just a soft spot in the cover two. It's going to be a really, really easy throw. Uh, what we're also going to have with the cover two, I like to kind of smoke screen this guy against the cover two, and then uh, I still like this post route quite a bit. What you can also do is like smart route in route. You can put this kind of whip instead if you want. That way we have a little bit more leverage to throw to the outside if the corner doesn't bite down hard enough. Uh, but that's going to open up the wheel on the sideline. And there's a huge window to throw that wheel on the sideline right there. Even with the deep out zone KO, we're still able to complete that. That wheel just gets such good depth so quickly that we're going to be able to freeform that to the outside. And that's going to be a huge gain. And people love to play cover two shells in this game. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but this is a heavy blitzing meta. Um, with a lot of cover two shells. Now, after the patch, obviously, a lot of things have changed, um, but I still think this play is really, really good. So I wanted to mention this just real quick before we hop into our next play, uh, because this is really, really good and something you should 100% use against cover two. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys what this play also looks like against man coverage. I'm gonna start out with off man coverage, and then we're gonna get into um, actual press man coverage because this is going to do a great job against both and just stock this is going to do a great job against man coverage that whip is going to win sometimes but what you guys are going to notice is as we get sacked and fumble right there obviously that's not what you're going for um but that wheel route from the slot receiver you're going to have an inside pass lead uh for a one play touchdown most times uh, even against off man coverage if you throw it inside just like that we're going to be able to hit that deep down the seams and that is against pretty much any db um, I didn't want to put a universal coverage DB on him just because it's going to get knocked out. But you're probably not going to play against deep route KOs. It's too much AP. People don't use it. But as you guys can see, just the way that it runs on the sideline, you're going to be able to throw an inside pass lead pretty much every single time. You can block your running back if you want to. You can also block your tight end if you want to and keep that wheel from the running back. It's completely up to you. But there are some other things we can do this play that we're going to go with this play that we're gonna go over here in a second. But this throw is super consistent and it's super money. This smokes man coverage, guys. It is really, really good against it. Uh, you can also, you can put a post right here, which is also really good against man coverage. And you can drag this guy. This is another really, really nice route combo against man coverage. This post is gonna do a great job against man. As we can see right there, it did smoke the man. But <clears throat> of course we got hit because it is mutt practice mode and that's just how mutt practice mode is. <clears throat> excuse me but same route combo right here and what you guys are also going to notice um and i'm going to try to buy a little bit of time and actually be able to throw that but that that running back wheel is going to be pretty much pretty open too all right so one thing i want to go over with press the rest of our route combos are going to stay very very similar um i like to whip this outside guy and i'll show you guys exactly why here in just a second but i like to put a post on the inside receiver obviously leave that wheel on the outside um, whatever that you want to do with the tight end you can do and if you want to um, do something like this instead that is definitely an, an opportunity to do that uh, drags are really good against man coverage this year there's a lot of meshing especially with four down linemen set and a lot of the time uh, the guy manned up to the drag will just get bumped and you will be in good shape to be able to throw that drag easily again we have the wheel to the running back the wheel to the running back is going to smoke man coverage pretty much every single time but i want to go over what exactly happens with um, this wheel route to the outside against press man coverage because it's a little bit different of a throw and I'll show you guys exactly what I mean right here uh, So last time we threw a pass lead like this and we were able to lead it up the field and um, Throw a one play touchdown pretty much every single time now The technique is a little bit different with press man coverage and what you guys need to do right here um, is It's a it's a timing throw and it's something that you will get down I promise you will get it down, but it takes time so Right here, what you need to do, you need to throw it as soon as he breaks right there. And it's an ag catch. Uh, this is an ag catch opportunity, and it's going to be something that you guys can get down fairly consistently. I'll show you guys a couple times right here just so we can actually um, have it happen. But basically, as soon as he makes that cut to the outside and hits the sideline, you're going to throw that uh, pretty much down, like a down pass lead, right, right towards... Um, like almost straight at the quarterback. You're going to go straight down uh, with a three form, and you should be able to complete that. It's a, It looks like a sketchy throw, but it's something that you can get down consistently. As you see, we're holding on to it consistently. This is a throw that you can make. All right, so let's go over the play tight and in. And I'm going to show you guys what this looks like actually against a cover three hard flat. And this is a really nice quick snap play. 
And basically all we're going to do here is we're going to put our outside receiver on a comeback. And then we can snap the ball. And this comeback should be wide open. As it is right there on the sideline, we're able to uh, not make a catch because this game is terrible. And if you don't have gift wrap, you don't catch anything in this game. Uh, but that's besides the point. So we have a nice little high-low over the middle with Metcalf and Pitts. Um, the running back's on a wheel route. You're always going to be able to throw wheel routes. Um, at some point during the uh, during the play, like right there when he cuts inside, you can throw that wheel route. Obviously, it got tipped. That's not what we were looking for right there. But to the wide side, there's always an opportunity to throw wheel routes at some point. As soon as he makes the break, you're going to be able to throw that and hold on to it for an easy gain against a cover three. But against any kind of hard flat or even deeper flats, um, these comeback routes are really good with a streak inside of it. And you're going to be able to throw that consistently for a huge, huge gain. Now, <clears throat> one other thing with this is with these comeback routes, um, if you can get the timing down, you can actually throw it a little bit early and kind of have it as like a fade route because that inside release route um, from the middle slot receiver gets upfield so quick and these comeback routes take a second to develop up the field that it kind of works like one of those wheel routes except to the outside. And that is a throw that you can make consistently against a cover three and a cover four. As you guys can see, we're throwing it even before the break, and we're still consistently making this catch. It's going to be something you're going to be able to do every time against any kind of hard flat defense. So this is definitely something I wanted to point out um, because it is very, very good. But if we do wait, we're going to be able to throw that comeback route just how we want to really easily. Quick play I wanted to go over against zone coverage, but I do think it is very good. So we got good old verticals now, and... Verticals is awesome. This is a really, really good play against man and zone coverage. This um, kind of crossing route from DK Metcalf right there is going to smoke man coverage. It's really, really good against man. Let's see what it looks like right here. And again, we're going to be able to throw that easily for a huge gain. Right there, universal coverage, obviously, is why that got um, knocked out. But that's in game that's going to be a catch 10 times out of 10 as long as we can buy time you guys see how much separation he's getting and the route tech is getting canceled out by the universal coverage so we're not getting an extra route running boost the other stock routes in this play are really really good we have the out route from cmc that is going to get separation on man consistently it might only be for a few yards but if they're bumping in the middle with like a cover one or if a user is on this guy they don't know if they're running the in or out route that can be really good and then again we have this deep down the field for a pretty much one play touchdown if there's no safety help over the top so this play is awesome against man coverage if you do have a tight end apprentice you can make it like trips tight end for verticals and you could put your uh, tight end on a corner route tight end corner routes of course gonna smoke man coverage as we guys can see right there obviously route tech uh, for whatever reason with practice mode I don't know why the X factors are always activated but they are um, and if you have a good release down the sideline you can throw this right there we actually probably shouldn't have held on to that uh, we got knocked out because there was an inside third right there but you guys can see how good this play is against man coverage even that stock out route uh, from the tight end is going to fry a lot of the time as you guys can see he gets crazy separation right there so this play is awesome against man but it's even better against zone let's show you guys that right now so four verticals against zone coverage i'll show you guys against cover three first and this is a pretty simple read um basically if they don't use her this streak right there you're going to be able to throw it every single time literally every single time you're going to be able to throw that against any kind of cover three whether it be hard flats whether it be zone drops whether it be anything if they don't man them up you're going to be able to throw that if they do man them up <clears throat> you can put this guy on a streak and you're going to be able to throw that right there uh, it's going to be a little bit later throw but that got knocked out that's not something that's going to happen consistently um but that throw is definitely definitely there pretty much every single time against a cover three right there boom deep deep out zone ko knock that out that's not something you're going to see very very often and if they're playing zone drops you're not going to get that kind of zone chuck press animation right there like they did and there's just a huge window against any kind of cover three let's show you guys what this looks like against cover four though so i'm going to show you guys what this looks like against cover four um i actually have a really really cool trick and i appreciate you guys watching the video um for this long I, I actually thought I was going to put Trio Offset and Trio Offset Week both in the same video. I'm deciding to put it just each in their own video because I don't want it to be an hour long ebook session. Um, I want you guys to get your daily fill but not be overloaded with information so you guys can actually lab this stuff 
on the fly as well. Um, but against cover four, this is really good. If we have this inside release, we're going to be able to throw it just like that pretty much every single time in the soft spot. Same way, same way against cover three, except with cover four, uh, you don't get that zone chuck animation, so it's an easier throw. As soon as you guys see that quarter flat bail to the outside or hard flat or whatever it is, <clears throat> there's going to be a window right there uh, to throw this pass. So we have that, and then what I like to do with this a lot of the time is put my running back on a Texas route, and um, then we can just kind of make a high low between that and the crosser. If their user plays low on the running back, like actually what happened right there, right there, I think that um, that hook zone kind of went with the tight end out route, which is also a good example of why these tight end out routes are so good. It's a really nice quick throw, and if they don't have hard flats, it's never gonna get guarded. So I really like that tight end flat route, but and I'll show you guys a little trick right here. This is pretty crazy. So, if you want a little bit extra time, you can block your running back and you can put your tight end on the angle route instead. So, um, same kind of thing right here. High-low read with the angle route and the crosser. But I'm going to show you guys something really, really cool that I'm actually going to make into a video because I think this is such a good tip. So, tight end angle route out of trips tight end style vertical play. Um, what you guys are going to notice right here is that once he gets into the pocket to where he's actually a threat, um, that's a one play touchdown against cover four. I'm going to show you guys what this looks like again, and I'm going to show you guys an instant replay uh, just to actually, so you can visually see it. So he's running with this inside release fade, and as soon as this tight end gets upfield to the point where he, he you know, he has to guard it, basically, because there's nobody else there to guard it. He gets over the hook zone, and he's a vertical threat. At that point, Paul Krause bails on this inverted kind of streak fade route, and uh, he's just wide, wide open for an easy touchdown. Like, there's nobody even remotely in his vicinity. So I'm going to show you guys this again. Hopefully, we can actually buy enough time in the pocket for this to work. And we should be able to. And again, like he just, he's so in conflict that he bites down on it hard. Really, really hard. And that is an incredible uh, cover four beater out of any trip style set. So I'll show you guys this again. And again, you guys can see at the very end right there, he was biting down. Um, I'll show you guys one more time. Just for uh, shits and giggles at this point, really. But. He bites down hard, and we have an easy one-play touchdown over the top. So you know we always save the best for last on this channel, and we're going to go over PA Post Shot. PA Post Shot is a play um, of the same name that we went over in our Ace Slot Offset video. If you haven't checked it out, definitely recommend go check it out. But PA Post Shot is going to be one of our um, beat every coverage kind of plays. So what I like to do against cover three is I will streak um, our inside receiver, DK Metcalf, right there, motion the tight end out, and put him on a comeback route. And uh, what you want to do with, out with this outside receiver is completely up to you. Smart routed in routes are always good. Drags are always good. Smoke screens are good. Comebacks are good. Completely up to you. We'll go double comeback right here uh, just because. But if we can actually buy enough time, uh, we're going to, you, you guys saw that was going to be wide open, right? You guys saw that that comeback uh, pulled down that outside third on the right side. And we had a wide open one play touchdown. So we'll go smart route and end route this time. We'll keep the play action. And as long as we have enough time, we're going to have a one play touchdown over the top uh, to Randy Moss. Right there, obviously not a great throw, but you guys can see exactly what we're getting at right here. Comeback routes are going to universally uh, pull down any kind of deep zone. That's been a thing for years. And as long as we have enough time to make the throw, we're going to be able to make the throw for an easy, easy one play touchdown over the top. So that is cover three. Let's show you guys what this looks like against cover four. So against cover four, we're going to set this up a little bit differently. What we're going to do here is I'm going to whip this inside receiver. I'm going to streak the middle receiver and I'm gonna put my tight end on a post route. And basically all we have to do right here is buy enough time for that post from the outside 
to get over the top. Right there, we're not going to have enough time, but you guys can see he was getting free. Um, you just have to wait for him to cross that inside quarter, and then we're going to be money. Uh, you can also uh, reverse this, and I obviously didn't mean to motion over right there. I'm going to motion him back, but we can actually reverse this, and I'll show you guys. I'm going to put DK Metcalf on a post, and I'm going to drag my tight end this time. And it should be the same result. As long as we have time, you guys can see that uh, Square was running wide open in the middle of the field. So I'm going to see if I can actually make this throw. Again, practice mode pra pass rush is brutal. It is brutal. Even with the play action, um, we're just getting shedded kind of crazy right there. So I'm going to try to cancel the play action and see if we can actually make this throw so I can show you guys you know, just how to pass lead it. Uh, but however you want to do it, if you want to post your tight end or you want to post your uh, wide receiver it's really up to you honestly you can post them both if you want to uh, if you really wanted to you can completely max protect motion this guy over and uh, we're still gonna be able to make this throw so we'll see if we can get that to work we still get shedded which is crazy but really all you need is that streak in that post and uh, you should be in for a long you should be in for a uh, really really easy one play touchdown I really appreciate you guys sticking around to the end of the video. If you did, make sure you slam that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and turn that noty bell on so you're notified every time we put another video out. Just like this, dropping tomorrow, we'll have another part to the spread offensive playbook. We're going to be going over a sister formation to this, which is going to be trio offset week. You guys are going to love it a lot. Some really unique concepts in trio offset week that we can't really do with trio offset, um, and we'll go over that in tomorrow's video. But I hope you guys did enjoy. Uh, as always, it's your boy Killer Cam Friend. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.